Have you ever been frustrated with messy data that seems impossible to analyze? Or have you ever spent hours cleaning and transforming data before you could even start producing results? Well, no worries. In this video, I'm going to show you over 50 data wrangling techniques, which will allow you to solve the most of your daily data manipulation challenges like a pro. We'll start with loading the Tidyverse package. First, because the plier package is part of it. And secondly, Tidyverse contains ready-to-use datasets, such as Table 2. We'll use the big six English verbs, namely arrange, select, mutate, filter, group by, and summarize. We learned from the first video of this series. But we now will dive deep into their arguments. Using the first verb arrange, we can sort our table by one or more variables. We get the earliest year first, then within every year we'll display the lowest counts first. The only problem with that is that our range orders rows by values in the ascending or low to high order by default. But we sometimes need the descending order to see the highest values first. For that, we can use the desk function to sort a variable in the descending or high to low order. While sorting several variables, only variables where you explicitly mention desk will be sorted in a descending order. The others will remain sorted in a default ascending way. It is useful for the case when you'd want to see the earliest years first, but at the same time the highest counts every year. As you arrange your data, missing values will be neatly placed at the bottom of your table regardless of whether you choose to sort in ascending or descending order. After arranging data, the next most useful thing is to select the most useful columns via the SELECT command. Selecting columns by simply writing their names into brackets seems like a great idea, but not when you are dealing with a table of 300 columns. Writing out 100 column names in brackets is no fun. But don't worry, there is a solution. By using a semicolon between the variables you need, you can easily select multiple columns in the middle of your table. But sometimes the columns in your table won't be nicely grouped together, which means you can't use the semicolon trick for selecting multiple columns. But there is still an easy way to eliminate unwanted columns without typing out every single name. Just add a minus sign in front of the columns you want to remove. Some folks like to use an exclamation mark instead of the minus, but personally I find the minus sign more intuitive. Still a lot of typing? If you know the column numbers you need, you can actually code even faster. This way, your code won't be dependent on specific column names, and you'll make less typing mistakes. However, let me give you a warning. Unlike many other programming languages, in R, the first column is denoted by 1, not 0. I don't know about you, but using 1 for the first column just makes more sense to me. So, keep this in mind the next time you are selecting columns in R using numbers. Now, with dplyr, you can make your life even easier if your column names follow certain patterns, such as mean of this or mean of that. Instead of tediously typing them all out, simply utilize dplyr's powerful starts with, ends with, or contains functions to quickly gather all the necessary columns. With this time-saving technique, you'll have more time to focus on the real work and get things done more efficiently. Want to apply multiple selection options at once? No problem. Just use the AND or OR operators to define multiple conditions. You can also use the exclamation mark to negate a condition. For example, if you want your table to exclude any columns with the letter A, but still include columns starting with C, you can use the exclamation mark before the first condition, and between conditions and no exclamation mark before the second. Similarly, if you want to select variables starting with C or ending with any letter except P and T, you can use the OR operator and negate the endings with P and T letters with the exclamation mark. 
This is helpful for managing ongoing flow of field data with common misspellings, which can prevent your pipeline from breaking down. To move important columns to the beginning of the table, list them first and add the everything argument to include the rest. If you prefer, you can use the function relocate instead, which does the same job as reordering columns manually. To fetch the last or third last column, simply request it with the last call function and use the offset argument. You see, with the plier, programming feels entirely natural and instinctive. To select specific columns that meet certain criteria, such as being numeric or textual, use SELECT IF. This is particularly useful for large datasets with numerous columns, as it allows for easy selection of the desired variables without manual selection. For instance, when working with the Diamonds dataset, we can avoid three ordered categorical columns by using SELECT IF is numeric in our pipeline. We can also transform particular variable names for our convenience. For example, we can change the case of the column names to upper or to lower cases by using SELECT AT command. Every now and then, we just want to have a look at the values of a specific column. To do so, the pull command comes in handy. And if you need to select a specific row, it's as straightforward as specifying which one you want, whether it's the first, last, ninth, or any other number. Now, it's time to transition away from reducing our dataset using select commands and instead utilize the mutate function to expand it. This command is intuitive because anything new in nature arises through mutations. But before proceeding with the mutate function, we can add a new column using the add columns function. It's useful for adding IDs to each row. By default, the mutate command places new columns on the right hand side, which can be difficult to keep track of with many columns. However, you can use the before argument to add new column on the left hand side. In case you want to add a new column before or after a specific column, it's preferable to use the mutate command instead of add columns. In addition, you can either fill new columns with whatever you want or use existing columns to calculate the new ones. And the best part is, right after you create a new column, you can use it for the further calculations in the same chunk of code. Although mutate keeps the old columns used to create new ones, you can use the transmute command if you only want to retain the new variables that you have created. Similarly, you can keep only the used columns. Even more convenient is the possibility to create multiple columns with a comma instead of repeating the mutate command for each new column. Near the usual arithmetic operations, like subtract or multiply, you can easily rank the values in any column or get a cumulative min, cumulative sum or cumulative product and even get a column with lagged or leading values if you need to and many more. Finally, before we go to the really cool stuff, I have to tell you that sometimes it's useful to be able to transfer the row names to a real column, or vice versa, any column to row names. Well, with Deploy, it could not be more intuitive, because programming in Deploy is very close to normal English. So, we have learned a few good techniques already. But you can become even more effective when you work with several columns at the same time. For example, you can select particular numeric variables in your table with mutate add function and make them categorical using factor argument. In order to get averages for all variables, use summarize all. Or when you want to transform all numeric columns with a logarithm, Use mutate if function, then provide an argument is numeric, and finally give a command of your choice, for example, log. Since R is a very intuitive programming language, and since underscore add 
underscore if and underscore all allow you to make any calculation across multiple columns. It didn't take long until a function named across was created, which unites the capabilities of at, if and all. For instance, we can easily round particular columns or calculate any statistics like mean or standard deviation for all groups of any categorical variable. So, summarizing values within columns is cool, but what if we want to summarize values of rows across multiple columns? Well, we can easily do that by using the rowwise and C across functions to perform rowwise aggregations. Speaking of rows, sometimes we need only a few particular rows. Using the filter function and logical operators such as less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, not equal, equal and or or, we can tell R exactly what data we want. We may even employ multiple operators simultaneously should the need arise by using the AND operator to verify several conditions or by using the OR operator by vertical line to determine either condition. But what if we need to filter out several values or categories? Well, in this case, we'll utilize the IN argument with the concatenate argument C. Then you can slice the dataset to retrieve specific rows, such as rows 1 to 3. Additionally, you can easily select random rows using the slice sample function. With the N argument, you can specify the number of random rows to retrieve, or with a prop argument, you can specify the proportion of the data to retrieve. Furthermore, you can use slice head to extract the top two rows and slice tail to retrieve the last three values. To obtain the two smallest or three largest values from any column, you can use the slice mean and slice max commands, which are even more intuitive. And final thing for slicing is that using prop argument, you can easily obtain the top 10% or the lowest 10% of specific values in each group. Another useful way to filter is when you want to determine how many distinct categories or values a particular column has. This also works for multiple columns. Additionally, if you want to retain other columns when filtering for unique rows, you can use the keep all true option. Alternatively, if you want to know the frequency of unique values in your table, use the COUNT function instead of DISTINCT. And then, we sometimes need to remove duplicate rows from our dataset, right? We can easily do that by either using DISTINCT ALL command or by using even more intuitive UNIQUE command. Finally, similarly to ADD COLUMN command, you can add rows to your dataset using a row command. By the way, here are three common mistakes I used to make often, which caused me a lot of frustration and which I want to save you from. The first mistake is using the assignment operator instead of the comparison operator while testing for equality. Fortunately, filter command will let you know about this mistake with an informative error message. The second mistake is to specify the first condition and then use OR without explicitly specifying the second condition. Although it works without throwing an error, it does not achieve the intended purpose because OR first checks the more important condition before checking the less important second condition. Now listen to me very carefully. Because what I am about to tell you could save you from a lot of frustration. NAs, which is the abbreviation for not available or simply for missing values, are highly contagious. So any operation involving an unknown value will also become unknown. To safeguard your data analysis, remove these NAs with the NA.RM argument. The group by divides your dataset into groups meaningful for your analysis. The top n is the older version of slice max we just learned in the previous section. 
and it also gives you top values for every group. Group by all is particularly useful for identifying duplicates in your dataset, because after grouping, a simple count will reveal the frequencies which can be sorted in descending order using desk option to bring the duplicates to the top of the resulting table. Groups are excellent for summarizing data, but at times they might hinder calculations. Therefore, if needed, you can always ungroup any dataset before complaining about R being stupid. Similar to select and mutate commands, you can group variables conditionally using group by if, group by at, and group by all. For instance, let's change three variables to factors or categories and group by only categorical variables after it. Once grouped, computing groupwise averages becomes a very simple task. As mentioned in the previous video, group by is the most effective if used with summarize function, because they allow you to aggregate data and calculate any summary statistics you want. Here is an example. Let's say you have a dataset about flowers in a field with three different species. You could use this summarize function to calculate the total length of flowers for each species separately. You can also do conditional summarizing across multiple columns at once using summarize at, summarize if, and summarize all. But summarize is even more useful when you need to calculate multiple summary statistics for multiple variables at once. For instance, consider a dataset about cars. By using summarize, you can count the number of cars with different cylinders, obtain the mean and standard deviation for each cylinder separately to compare mileage, and find any quantile of horsepower. The median, which might be more useful than the average, is taken at a 0.5 quantile. Additionally, you can define what makes a car strong and count how many strong cars each category contains. It's amazing how just a few lines of code can help you to quickly explore your dataset. However, if you want to explore your dataset in just one line of code and get even more valuable insights, check out this video on the automated exploratory analysis.